Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Just a quick side note before we start, this is me working through all of my previous tutorials but updating them for Blender version 4. So if you are still working with Blender version 3 then please head back to the playlist section of my channel and check those out there. Anyway, in the meantime what we're going to do is try and recreate this soap bubble material using Blender version 4. So here's my scene and let me take you through that. So I basically have the, oops, I basically have just a diorama set up with a single area light and a camera and then in the scene what I've got is the main bubble couple of extras and then a particle system in two cubes just to give that extra um, those extra bubbles for the scene none of these are actually necessary for creating the material but I know a lot of you like to see how scenes are created so that's the setup that I have let's switch over to the shading tab let's collapse these so that I can get rid of those bits and I'll bring in this bit so this is what we're going to be focusing on, just this single icosphere. And to start this, I'm going into the shading tab. I have my viewport shading enabled. I am using the Cycles render engine and my GPU to do all the processing. So with the object selected, I'm going to hit New and A and full stop. And that will bring in the principal shader into focus. <coughs> so... The principal shader has changed quite a bit since version 3, so there's a few extra bits that we need to plug into, although on this occasion we're not actually going to use it, so we'll delete that. We're going to press Shift A and search for a texture coordinate and plonk that in here. We're going to take the object output and plug that into the surface and there you can see the texture coordinate has been applied. We're also going to need a mapping node and we're going to drop that in between the two. I'm going to make no changes to that just now, just move them off a bit. In fact actually let me make a bit more space by right clicking on that divider, join areas and then dragging my mouse and clicking and the same here. There we go, so we've got a bit more space to work in now. Now we need a noise texture and we're going to plug that in there and we're going to leave normalize selected, leave it as 3D, change the scale to 1, detail to 5, roughness to 0 0.005, this new lacunarity thing to 2 and distortion to 1. So you can see we've kind of got the rainbow effect that we'll want coming through. We're now going to add a colour ramp. And we're going to set the colour mode to HSL. And set the interpolation to counterclockwise. We're going to move the black into position 0.15. And we're going to set it as like a light pink. Oops. So we'll put the value all the way up. Saturation hardly any at all. Maybe 0.25. And then we'll just use the hue value to cycle around until we get a pinkish colour. I think I need a little more saturation than that. Let's go with that. So we've got 0.85 on the hue. 0.325 on the saturation and a value of 1. We're going to put our cursor over this colour and press Control c to copy it. We're then going to select the white, move it to position 0.85 and then move the cursor over this colour block again and press Control v to paste that colour. Now you can see we've got kind of a rainbow happening through that colour ramp but it's kind of softened down what's going on up here. To intensify that a bit, we're going to get a hue saturation value node and plug that in here. We're going to increase the saturation to 1.25 and leave everything else as it is. 
Now to get the transparency we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need a glass BSDF. We're going to plug that directly in here. And we're going to go with the Beckman um, thingy. What's the phrase? Distribution mode. Roughness of zero and IOR of 0 0.01. Now it's quite faceted at the moment, so I'm going to right click on that object and shade smooth. There we go. That's much better. Now we also need a transparent BSDF here. Leave it as it is. Hold down Control Shift and then right click on this and drag down towards the glass shader and that will add a mix shader in between. Now we are going to need a second mixed shader, so I'm going to select that one and press Shift D to duplicate. And then I will drop it just after. Now we're going to control the factor with a couple of other nodes. First up is a layer weight node. <coughs> and we're going to take the facing value from that, plug it into the factor of the first mixed shader, and we'll set the blend to 0.3. We'll need a second one of those for the second mix shader. This time we're going to take the Fresnel value and plug it into the factor of the mix shader. I'm going to set the blend to 0 0.005. Basically what this is doing is just really lensing. So by putting it to a very small value it just gives that lensing around the outside edge. So let's run that, th run back through that so you know roughly what's happening. So the noise texture is giving us this kind of patterning. We're then colouring that in with the colour ramp and intensifying that colour slightly with our hue saturation node. In fact, if I push this all the way up, you can see. And then the hue would actually just change the colours around a bit. Transparency is basically making the object see-through and the glass is giving us the lensing that you would expect from a three-dimensional object. The layer weight is basically giving us a lighter values around the outside and darker values in the center, which is acting as a factor to mix these two together in this mix shader. And then this layer weight, as I said, is basically giving us a very slight lensing around the outside edge. So if I increase that to 0 0.05 in fact, you can see actually now that it gives us that lensing and intensifies the colours there. So that's what each of those nodes is doing within that um, scene. Now if I turn off all this other rubbish, you can kind of see that we have the um, bubble there on its own. And just so you get a better idea of that it is see-through, I'm going to shift D to duplicate it and then I'll bring that one off to the side GX to put it to the side and GY to move it back and you can see what's happening here you can see through you've got all the highlights from the lighting and you've got all of the sort of values and see through from everything else now, speaking of the lighting, I am controlling that lighting by tagging it uh, or constraining it to this empty. So if I now move that empty, that lighting will kind of move with the empty. And that's a good trick for lighting. So as opposed to trying to constrain it to your object, which will constrain it to the center of the object, you can actually move that lighting to just glance over the edge of an object just by pushing it backwards or forwards. Anyway, I hope you find that useful. Let's just quickly render this out. And there we have our rendered soap bubble. If you're worried at all about the shaping of this object, I was working quick and rough and ready. Don't forget you can add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth that out. But in terms of the material itself, I think you'll agree, it looks fantastic. 
Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment. Any questions, thoughts or suggestions for future tutorials, that would be great. Please also remember to check out my Patreon page and consider subscribing to help support this channel. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank you.